Okay, now that we have our microphone signal path, we've set our input gain properly. We have our high pass filter, our parametric EQ, and our leveler for all eight microphones. Let's mix them all together. A typical thing is to use an auto mixer. So I'm coming up here to the mixer menu with, and then choosing auto mixer. And we're going to come down here and left click and drop it on the screen. And in this case, we have eight microphones, so I can choose the eight by one in some of our preset configurations, or I can come to custom and I can tab over or mouse over or whatever and choose eight and hit OK. And then how an eight channel auto mixer. The other features we'll come back and discuss in a later video. So let's connect these together with all eight going into the eight inputs and then we have our one mixed output. Now here's a couple things inside. You can see that we have all of our inputs on the left. They come into the cross points going out the top here and we can look at the mic options. Now this first option is designated mic on slash last mic hold. Normally in the default here none means that once the audio signal drops below the threshold on all of the microphones, it will turn them all off. And that can be a troublesome thing if we are doing a video conference where the far end thinks we just hung up on them. We need to leave a microphone open at all times so that they can hear at least a little bit of background noise from the room. So what we can do is we can choose for that to be either the last mic that was on or if there's a certain chairman's microphone or something like that, we can choose that. In this case, I'll just use last mic hold. The logic outputs follow mic logic. We'll, not, we'll come back and discuss that in a later video on how to use that. But in this video, we'll talk about the open mic limits. First, we can do is we can enable the open mic limits, and then that allows us to turn down the number of possible microphones that can be open at one time. Now, part of the function of an automatic mixer is it not only listens to the overall threshold of the noise in the room and decides which microphone is turned on based on which one is above the threshold, it also counts the number of open microphones that are open at any given moment. Every time we double the number of open microphones in a room in a system, we lose three decibels of gain before feedback. So if we have one microphone open, we can have it open at full volume. If we open up a second, second microphone, we need to reduce the overall output of the mixer by three decibels to maintain the same level because there's a buildup between the two microphones and therefore we're going to end up getting more feedback. Then if we have four microphones open, we need to come down six decibels. If we have eight microphones open, we need to come down nine decibels from full, etc. Every doubling of microphones means we need to reduce the output of the mixer by three decibels. So by limiting the number of open mics at any time, we can maximize our signal to noise ratio and our maximize our gain before feedback. So once we have set these, we can hit OK. And then another option that we can set is we can go to any particular cross point and we can right click and then we can edit the channel settings. And we can choose for that channel to be a part of the number of open microphone gains. We can choose for that channel to be a manual channel. We can be post gate, post nom on our direct outs. We'll come back into another uh, video discuss these right here. But let's go ahead and discuss the off attenuation. In reality, we're not turning off of the microphone completely. We are actually turning it down by 40 decibels, which is pretty much off. Then the gate hold time is saying once the microphone goes below the threshold, how long do we leave it open before we shut it off? I.e., how long do we wait for the person who just is pausing between words before we turn off their microphone? And the default is one second, 1,000 milliseconds, and that tends to work really well. So we'll come back to the rest of these settings in a future video. So to review, the auto mixer does three things for us. One, it mixes our microphones together. Secondly, it has an adaptive threshold and is constantly listening to the room to see which microphones are of signal and which microphones are just picking up room noise and therefore which microphones should be on and which microphones should be off. And then the third is it does the number of open microphone attenuations and takes care of that gain before feedback issue that we have when we open up more microphones. 
One word of caution on the auto mixer is we would never want to add level control adjustments before the auto mixer. The reason for this is that in order for it to have the adaptive threshold and to know which microphone is louder than the noise in the room, it needs to hear every microphone equally. Let's take a quick look at what we can do to adjust microphone level independently. One, we can use direct outs, and we'll cover that in the next video, and do a level control after the auto mixer. Secondly, if we do look inside the auto mixer, the level controls that are marked level in are actually after the auto mixing circuitry. So if we need to control them at this point, we can. The only challenge with controlling them at this point is we do not have the ability to set maximum or minimum limits within Nexia. We can only do that in a third-party control system, and where is if we use a level control block afterwards, we can set a maximum and a minimum, which we will talk about in another future video. So that is our friend the auto mixer, at least the first part of it. In the next video, we'll talk about direct outs and some of the features that we did not discuss in this video.